Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here with day 14 and we are going to create cards usually, yeah, usually, using similar dies. So these, it's like a nesting die, okay? Uh, this has, the set that I'm using actually is by Recollections. I get it from my local Michael's store. I have no idea what it's called because everything around Christmas is called Christmas Noel for Recollections. I absolutely love it. Um, but there are three dies in this set. You say Christmas Noel. Everything says Christmas Noel. Even the pattern paper says Christmas Noel. Um, but you can see there are three dies. Now, each one can stand on its own, meaning you can use it by itself. One has a star on top. One has an embossed area. But you can, the technique that I'm about to do right now, you can do also do with nesting dies, dies that have the same shape. All right. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be using a standard A2 size card base. And what I want to do first is stamp a sentiment on the inside. If you've watched any of my videos before, there are times where I say we put so much work onto the outside, let's not cover it up with a sentiment. Sometimes the simplistic designs that we do as well, we don't want to cover those up either. And also in my previous videos, you know I am a huge fan of the Stampers Anonymous uh, holiday Christmas sentiment packs. And this is Christmas time three. I love the font. I am, I am a fan of the vintage look and these sentiments are always nice and big and bold and beautiful and yay. So I chose to stamp it on the inside of the card and I very rarely do anything to the inside of my cards. Um, if I do anything, it is to put the sentiment to the inside. Um, I am finding I'm doing that more um, because again, we do sometimes, even if it's a simplistic design, we put work into that. Why cover it up? <laughs> Unless it's an interactive card, then we can put the sentiments out there. So maybe that's something that I'll do for 2021. All of my sentiments will go on to the inside of my card bases. Let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> not long I'll forget but again we do what we want we do what comes as we make the card what we feel as we make the card now you can see along the top I've taken care of all of my die cutting already I do try to do that prior to the start of my videos but everything else I'm keeping the majority of everything in through these videos I try not to do too much editing unless I find I walk away that would be bad if, you know, I kept you there. And if I choose the need to use my double-sided foam squares instead of my double-sided tape on the back of an item. And in this case, I do do that. I, you know, change over there. So for each one of the inside of my card bases, I'm using my anti-static pouch. And then I'm stamping my image with my clear ink. And I'm going to be either using my Recollections Silver or my Recollections Gold Embossing Powder. I'm really a fan of these two. Um, I'm even a fan of the white. Um, you know, we all struggle. I struggle with embossing, you know, to get that smooth image. Um, I don't have time to stamp twice. <laughs> I just want to stamp one and have a nice clean image. Um, and I do find the Recollections Metallics give a beautiful first impression one layer. It does help to have your heat gun heated up, so I do heat it a little bit. Yes, I use my hand. Please, no one do that. Please do not do what I do for that. Um, I do use my hand for the heat, um, and then once I know it's reached temperature, then I will take it to the card. Again, please, it is not safe to do that. Don't do it. I'll try not to show that next time. So you can see I'm just heating these up, um, and I am. I'm getting a beautiful, I mean, a beautiful image every time. I just love that sentiment. I just love the font. Um, whenever I can use them, I use them. They're nice, big, bold, and, and beautiful. So, getting my cards ready. Now we're going to work on the fronts. And again, they're very simplistic. Um, meaning, there's not no inking. There's no fancy die cutting. There's no 
coloring. There's no water coloring. There's no, there's none of that. It's simple cardstock, um, cut into shapes and then glued upon our panels. So I've taken the solid piece of cardstock and I used the color that I used for the back of the tray, the first layer of the tray. That is my mat. That was cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I took a piece of the Recollections Shimmer uh, cardstock. Um, it's a beautiful, it's got gold and silver flecks to it. I absolutely love that shimmer pack and you can get a big pack of it. Um, and I cut that down to be four by five and a quarter. I then die cut my pieces. So you can see I'm using plain cardstock. I'm using mirror cardstock. I'm using specialty cardstock. And again, these all came from my scrap file. Um, really did not want to pull out a new sheet of cardstock, but I just wanted to use up my scraps. Um, here's where you're going to see tons and tons of foam squares coming in. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, again, when I do the voiceovers and I look at this, I'm like, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> this would be one of them. For some reason, I just didn't grab my phone tape. <laughs> but I do for the next two. <laughs> Never fear. Once I have that good and foamed up, we stick that right into the center of the card. Then this entire panel is going to go to the front of my standard A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And these are all top folding. And again, simplistic in nature. But again, like I always say, sometimes simplistic is the most elegant and beautiful. You don't need all the fancy coloring mediums and fancy techniques. Um, just digging into our stash and what we have will always create beautiful results. Now, let's say you don't have any dies. Why can you not create your own template to cut out of your cardstock? And you can absolutely do that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, people, you have heard me say this before. We are not Hallmark. Our cards are handmade. Our cards are unique. Our cards are one of a kind. And it doesn't matter if you have the same exact die and if you do the same exact thing that I do. See, here comes the phone tape. See, I'm telling you. Now I got smart. Your card is going to look different because you're going to set it a different way. You're going to place the pieces a different way. So please continue to enjoy this and have fun. So now that I got smart and used foam tape, which is a lot easier to cut down, this double-sided foam tape that I'm using here is by scrapbook.com. Um, and I always get the, while it doesn't have many feet on it, I do get the one inch because then I can cut it down to whatever size I need um, when it comes to the backs. Same thing, I'm going to put this panel, and again, you can see how we're layering layering them so for the blue the gold and the green that's on the right there i put all the trees towards the bottom meaning towards the the back die is centered but then the rest of them are towards the bottom of that die for the aqua and the silver i put all the trees to the center so again the back the largest die is always centered onto the base but then the second and the top layer, or the middle and the top layer, are always at different points. So, ones are set down below, the others are set in the center, and I believe, and I just missed this, because of course, as I'm talking, I'm actually looking at the wall. Um, yes, so for the red one, these are actually set towards the top. Again, it's going to give you three different looks. If all of the cards were set the way this one is set, that I'm working now, working on right now, <coughs> meaning all of the trees set up towards the top of the, of the base die, then the sentiment would look absolutely beautiful going across the bottom. You could even put your sentiment in the bottom of that die cut, and it would be absolutely perfect. But for the rest of them, a sentiment on the front just didn't look right. And by simply doing these three different elements, you're creating a note card set. 
you know, you don't have to put a sentiment on the inside. I'm very big on creating cards, not putting sentiments on them, keeping those in my stash and just grabbing as I need. Maybe I have a birthday in Christmas, in December. I've got one ready. I can have a Christmas theme to that birthday card. Just because it has a tree on it doesn't mean it can't be a birthday card. Mr. Frosty is wishing somebody a happy birthday in one of my previous videos. Why not? So again, that's the beauty of this. Be creative. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you can do what you're looking for. Now on that center die, the top die, it is an embossed area. So you can stop after your layers are put onto your card. You have texture, you have the layers, it's all right there for you. I chose to add some of my uh, Pretty Pink Posh gems in the silver or the gold, um, just to add some, and I'm following the, filig the filigree design that's on that. So where it curls, that's where I'm putting a gem. You can put pearls, you can put other types of rhinestones, you could put sequins, you could put a bead, whatever you would want to put on there, you certainly can. Um, you can grab some watercolors and just put some dots of watercolors, your Nouveau drops, anything that you may have from your stash. <clears throat> that is definitely what I'm going to encourage you to put on the front um, to further embellishment or add embellishments. Now, you could even just leave that tree alone and put your embellishments around, as you hear my brain jingling, put your embellishments around that tree. Again, this just adds a little bit more sparkle um, to the front of the card. Just gives it a little bit more interest um, when it comes to the cards. Now, one of the things that I love to do um, when it comes to my cards, I love to keep adding layers. So I could put, you know, a layer of foam tape at one and then put another layer of foam tape for my sentiment or another image. So I could have that double layer. Um, one of the questions that I get asked a lot are about envelopes. Um, you can get a standard A2 size envelope um, for your cards. I do not. Uh, when I get my envelopes, I actually go up one size. And of course, I'm always asked what that size is. Um, and of course, I don't have it in front of me. But hang on. Give me one second. And actually, the size that I get, it's considered an A6 size. It measures four and three quarters by six and a half. So that envelopes really will expand and allow for um, the dimension that I've put on there. So these are the three cards that we created. You can tell I'm making multiples and I'm kind of showing a technique um, along with featuring a company um, or whatever we are creating. So again, this is day 14. We have crossed over the hump, absolutely. Um, so I do hope you are enjoying the series. And as always, the products that I use will be listed down below in the video description as long as I can find them. But again, dig into your stash. Look at those similar dies, similar die shapes, even those that can be interchanged and use those. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below and I will make sure I answer those questions as quickly as possible. I am slowly catching up in the comments, but I will get back to you. Smile, try to laugh every day, continue to stay safe and healthy. We are getting through this together, but remember what's most important to me. Always be creative. Till next time, guys, and take care.